Hey Church, LBC Bite Size, good to see you. Today we're going to look at the life of Peter. And I say we're going to look at Peter's life, we've literally got a 10 minute bite size. You cannot look at the life of this man in 10 minutes. But hopefully I can whet your appetite that you may dive into the Word of God to go and find more about this true man of God. So who is Peter? Peter is one of the 12 disciples. He is a Galilean fisherman. He's the brother of Andrew. He's going to be shabby dressed, like he's trampy dressed. He's, he's a man that works out on the sea. He's holes in him, um, dirty, smelly. He's going to be quick tempered. He's going to have a vulgar language. He's going to be a man's man. He's going to be fearless. I say fearless because the storms on the Sea of Galilee, they were fierce. This man's going to be fearless. He's going to be a working class guy that wants to go down the footy, that wants to go into the pub, have a beer. He wants to be around his mates, probably talk some dirty jokes, probably go with vulgar language. That's the kind of man that he is. It's just your normal, everyday, coal mining type of bloke. He's a man's man. And yet there was a day when Jesus walked past him in Mark chapter 1 verse 17. And he said, Peter, follow me and I will make you a fisher of men. Peter received the call that day. And he chose to leave everything to follow Jesus. He chose to leave everything and run after his calling. The question I ask you today, church, have you done the same for Jesus? Have you left everything to follow him? Or are you still holding on to the things of the past? Are you still holding on to the things of this world? Or have you left everything and said, I'm running after Jesus, 100% wholehearted, no one can do that bit for you. Only you can do that bit. Peter himself, just to know a bit more about the man Peter, he was a man that was married. How do we find that out? Because of a joke that went round before that said Jesus obviously didn't like Peter because he healed his mother-in-law. Let it sink in a moment. Now you've got it. We move forward in the Gospels. We see that Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law. Peter was one of the most outspoken of all the disciples. Nothing wrong with being outspoken for Jesus, by the way. The Bible says, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my father. One day we've got to stand in front of God and I want to be able to say, God, with the knowledge that I had, I tried to tell people the truth. If they won't listen to it, they won't receive it. I can't let that get me down. I have to move on. Keep sharing the truth and keep moving on to the next person to tell them the truth of who Jesus is. The village that he comes from, it's the same one that Philip comes from. I think they pronounce it Bethsaida, something along those lines. You'll find it in John 1 verse 44. Andrew, Peter, Philip, they all come from that same village. In the book of Luke chapter 5, we know that Jesus said, like, cast your nets down and you're going to catch this great amount of fish. And Peter, this is his response to this all. We see chapter 5, verse 6 to 8 of the book of Luke. And it says, and when they had done this, basically when they'd cast their nets, where Jesus had said, throw it down. they have been toiling all night. they have been going for it, but they listened to Jesus on the shore. They do as he says. And it says, and when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Peter saw this or when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus's knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Peter had seen the miraculousness of God. Peter had seen the mercy and the grace of Jesus. And then he says, I'm a sinful man, depart from me. When you meet Jesus, you can't help but know who you are. When you stand in the room with holiness, when you stand in the room with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, 
You can't deny that you're a sinful man in need of a saviour. Peter was a man of shamed of his sinfulness. Are we ashamed of the things that we've done? We should be ashamed of our sin, and yet we've been forgiven so we can let that shame leave us because we give it to the feet of Christ. We put it at the feet of Christ, and he takes that shame and that guilt from us. But if we don't go to him with this, like, Lord, I am so sorry. If we don't go with that shame attached to us, ready to pass on to him and to give to him, then do we truly understand our need of a saviour? When we come to Jesus thinking, I'm already a good person. I've never done this. I've never done that. We already come into the room trying to tell Jesus of our goodness. And Isaiah says, even our greatest, our most righteous acts are nothing but filthy rags. Jesus asked in one part, who do people say that I am? A lot of people were saying a lot of things about Jesus. But Peter responds and says, you are the Christ. He was the first one to acknowledge Jesus, you are the Christ. And it is here that Jesus says to Peter, who was named Simon, he says, Simon, your name's no longer going to be Simon, but I'm going to call you Peter, because on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Remember, names mean something in the Bible. When we see people's names changed, it's changed for a reason. Peter, the name Peter, it means rock. Jesus said, I'm going to change your name from Simon to Peter, because on this rock, I'm going to build my church. Peter, what more did he do? He rebuked Jesus. This is the man that Peter is, always putting his foot in his mouth, really outspoken, sold out for Jesus. Like, loves God with all his heart. Like, I will die for you, Jesus. That's who Peter is. Peter's the disciple that rebuked Jesus. <laughs> the two don't go together. People would see that. They'd say, he rebuked Jesus. He's not a Christian. He's not this. But they don't see the other 99% of the things that Peter does for the Lord. Not one of us is perfect, church. Peter denies Jesus. Three times, three times as Jesus is led to the cross. He denies him three times. He's rebuked Jesus when they're together. He's bold and often wrong. Peter has witnessed so many miracles from Jesus. He has witnessed Jesus perform the miraculous on a daily basis for three years. Peter cannot deny who Jesus is. And yet when Jesus is taken to a cross... Peter goes back to his old life. He goes straight back to being a fisherman. Peter saw the glory of God as he was included in the transfiguration story. And the story that really stands out to me all the time when I think, think of Peter is remember when Jesus walked on water. They saw Jesus walking on water and Jesus says, Peter, come to me. Peter gets out of the boat, walks on water as well. And then we read about, he sees the storm, he sees the waves. In other words, he takes his eyes off Jesus, he gets fearful and begins to sink. And I'd always thought of it like he begins to sink, but it's, it's made even more, made even more special when you go to John chapter 21 verse 7. And you see, after Jesus' death and resurrection, he's on the sand, he's on the beach, and Peter notices him from the boat as they're sailing, fishing. Peter jumps out of the boat and he swims back to the shore before the boat even gets there, showing that Peter was actually a really good swimmer. And you can be a really good man and woman in life. You can cope with life really well. You can have broad shoulders. You can be big and strong and you can do all these things. But the moral of the story is, is when you take your eyes off Jesus and you see the storm and you see that you can be the best swimmer in the world. But when you take your eyes off Christ, things will start to pull you down. Things will start to crush you. You'll start to sink. Fear will hit you, and when fear hits you, people do crazy things. Keep 
your eyes on Christ. Another question. Is there anything lately that has caused you to take your eyes off Christ? If there is, you must put them back on him. If you don't, you will be like Peter and you will start to drown. You will start to sink. In the story, when that happened, we see that Jesus lifts him back up. Get your eyes back on Jesus. Get your eyes back on Jesus, church. In John chapter 21, we see an incredible prophecy, if you like, from Jesus to John. But we see the historians backing it up now. There were three historians that wrote about Peter and they said that he had been stretched out by his hands. They said that he was dressed in prison attire and they said that he was taken where no one wants to go. What do you mean he was taken where no one wants to go? He was taken to crucifixion. When we go to the book of John chapter 21, this is what Jesus said on the shore to Peter when he said, feed my sheep. He said, most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But Peter, when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. The historians just backed up the very thing spoken by Jesus. Peter also was a man that was willing to suffer persecution, imprisonment, beatings. He was willing to do it all, all for the glory of God. And yet he still rejoiced. In Acts chapter 5, we see after more beatings for Peter, more imprisonments, more threats, the Bible says that he was rejoicing that he had been counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. From this arrogant, loud, cocky, foul-mouthed temper, he became a humble, willing, obedient servant of the Lord. Peter is the perfect example, church, of God doesn't have to wait for a man to be perfect to use him. God can use us and make us as he does with us, as he chooses and he wills. Here's the potter, were the clay church, an experience will God, with God, should I say, will change a man. Now church, I'm going to talk, my next subject that I'm going to talk on, I want to look and tackle the subject of abortion, something that I put a Facebook post up the other day and what I just thought let me just talk about it instead it's easier to talk about rather than trying to do anything over Facebook things get misunderstood misread and I'd like to address a few things in the next talk I thought I'd do that next week rather than me doing it this week um, when I passionately passionately would like to defend um, innocent voices that don't have a voice for themselves. Anyway, church, be blessed. And with all love, I will see you very soon. Church, stay well during this lockdown time. Keep being connected into the bite sizes. Keep being connected. Sunday morning, I'll be speaking to you online. And um, be there for one another. Get your eyes on Jesus. Don't let the things of the world pull you down, drag you down in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed, church.